Uh, hello. So it's uh, very nice to interact with uh, with all of you. So yeah, if you have any questions about uh, the course uh, or the exam and various things, um, you can definitely ask. So I'll try to uh, try my best to clear those questions uh, to the best possible. Thank you. Hello, sir. This is Satish, sir. Satish from Vaghdevi College. Mm -hmm. Sir, at the assignment number six, problem number two, we gave the initial guess of uh, that one is one comma one, sir. And the question, but at the solutions, you give you pi zero is equal to zero comma zero. Okay. Uh, oh, in the solutions, is it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, okay. So basically, the initial guess has to be given as one comma one. In this particular problem, using LSQ non-lin, uh, uh, whether you give the initial guess as zero comma zero or one comma one, you will get the same solution. So therefore, for the final solution, it wouldn't matter whether we gave one comma one or zero comma zero for this particular problem itself. In some other problems, it would matter, and that's why we we specify what initial guesses have to be given. But in this particular problem, the solution, final solution does not depend on the initial guess. Okay, did that answer your question? Sir, uh, did that answer your question? Ah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, sir. Sure. Okay. Uh, so exam. So I think uh, all of you might have seen the overall exam pattern. So those are the type of questions that will be there. Uh, so the first, yes. Okay, so the first one type of question is uh, going to be multiple choice question. In multiple choice question, there's only one correct answer. Uh, then there is match the columns. Match the columns is the application on the left column has to be matched with, uh, le let's say, one of the applications is is given over there, uh, and the correct answer over there, let's say, is uh, the command sum. So you just have to tick uh, whatever box that. Some corresponds to. So that's the uh, match the column questions. Uh, then we have uh, uh, short answer question where uh, the final answer would be numerical answer. So let's say uh, you have a vector one, two, three, four, five, and you want to find some uh, one, two, three, four, five. The value, the answer to that is going to be 15. So you just have to enter the answer 15 uh, in the numerical columns, and that's. That's all you need to do. So that's the short answer type question. The next question, uh, next set of questions would be on a short coding type questions. So uh, the short coding type question would be codes that you need to write. That would be one line codes. Yeah. You don't. Uh, these are not lengthy codes. These are very short one line codes. Uh, let's say you want to find factorial of a number. Then factorial of a number can be found by using prod command, prod command, prod one colon n. So if you write that, uh, that is what is expected. Uh, so that's the short MATLAB code type question. So those are single line codes. Then there are co questions where uh, I have a, a screenshot of MATLAB code. The screenshot will have up to 10 lines of code, and there would be an error in one of the lines. And you need to write out which line that error is in, or identify what's the type of error. And finally, there will be one coding question, and that's uh, to write a MATLAB code. Now, students do, who are writing exams do not have access to MATLAB, so therefore, we are not looking at whether the code will run in MATLAB accurately or not. We are looking at, one, the logic that you have used, and second, whether you have a reasonable understanding of MATLAB. So for example, if the command is prod or comprod, you should have a reasonable understanding of that of that command, and that's sufficient. If there are minor syntax errors, you don't have to worry about it because this will be manually graded, and we won't run it in MATLAB uh, because you guys don't have access to MATLAB. So these are the various type of questions uh, that will be there in the final exam, uh, and those have been indicated in the model question paper. So yeah, so that's what I had uh, to discuss from my side about the question paper for the final exam. Sir, I am not able to find the solution of Newton-Raphson method. 
So can you explain about the solution? Uh, four and question number one. Sorry. Assignment four, question number one. Question number one. Okay. So have you looked at the solution that were posted? Yeah, sir. But not understanding. It. Not able to solve using MATLAB. I know this by mathematics. Uh, Wait, so assignment four, question one is Gauss Seidel. It's not Newton Raphson. So you have a question on Newton Raphson or Gauss Seidel? No, sir. Newton Raphson, sir. Sorry, assignment five, sir. Assignment five. Okay. Uh, just give me a <laughs> few seconds. I will bring up. So the Newton Raphsons. I'll just write down on uh, on the sheet over here. Uh, I hope you can see that. Is the next new guesses? The new guesses are given by x i plus one equal to x i. Minus f at x i divided by okay. So can you see this equation? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the equation that you use in order to get new guesses of uh, uh, x using Newton-Raphson method, right? So you will start with certain initial guess. So let's say our initial guess was x zero. Uh, let me just look at this problem again. X uh, x zero equal to twenty. Let's say so. That's what we started off with. Okay, and then we need to go from for i equal to equal to one to let's say fifty. Let's say we want to do fifty iterations. This is how we are going to generate the new guess. Okay. Now keep in mind MATLAB. Arrays start from one. MATLAB arrays do not start from zero. So if we write x zero equal to twenty, we are going to get an error. So we need to write x one. Sorry. Yeah, we need to write x one equal to twenty as the first guy, and then in this particular loop, we are going to calculate uh, using Newton Raphson's this particular guy. Right, and we we need to check error is absolute value of the difference between x i plus one minus x i. This is the definition of error. This is how we have defined the error, and we need to say that if the absolute value of error is is less than certain tolerance one e minus four, then we will stop. We will give the command break. End. And then we'll also end the loop. So this is what Newton-Raphson's method is going to look like. So now the question is, what is this f, and what is this f dash? This f is the function uh, 40 yeah. multiplied by x to the power 1.5, etc., that is given in the problem. And f dash is also given in the problem. So instead of writing f of x i and f dash of x i, you will have to write the actual expressions down over here. Okay, so once you do that, you will get the solution. So the core part of the code is really this particular lines which have been put inside the for loop. If you don't want to use for, you can use while instead. And as we have shown in the first module, if you use while, then this particular command that is there will go inside the while loop. Okay, in this example. You d you did not have to do you did not have to do this error checking. You only had to run for uh, the loop for four iterations. That was the problem statement. So this is how you will run that in the assignment example. So these statements you won't have. You will just have this. So that's the Newton-Raphson code that you will have. Okay. So does that answer your question? Sir, another question. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. My question is assignment number two, problem number four. Yeah. Uh, I can't hear you. Can you speak louder or closer to the mic, please? Assignment two. Assignment two, uh, question number third, McLaurin series. Okay. Yes, sir. Solution. Yeah. So you want me to show how how the, the solution works? So so for uh, assignment two, problem four, you want to see how the solution works, is it? Yes. 
okay okay so let me look at the problem okay so uh okay so in this problem what you need to do is to write the maclaurin series for e to the power x now the maclaurin series for e to the power x is e to the power x is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial and so on yes. okay so the first step is uh, again in in this particular uh, example of solving this so the first step that we did was to get a vector vec okay now what does vec involve so vec should the vector vec should be 1 Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So now the vec is basically going to be a one x x square by two x cube by three factorial x to the power four by four factorial and so on. which is nothing but 1 x x square x cube x to the power 4 dot slash 1 1 2 1 2 2 3 1 and sorry uh, One into two into three into four and so on. Okay, so this is how vec is going to be generated. So this is how you can generate your vec and store them in the vector vec. So how do we do that? We do that using the command vec equal to x dot caret. 1 to n okay x dot caret 1 to n will generate this guy over here okay and to generate this you will have to use cum prod 1 to n okay and now we need to do element by element division so we have dot slash that will do element by element division of of vec okay so now this vec if you see contains everything from this point onwards it does not contain the first element so we need to add that first element in that vector by saying vec equal to 1 comma vec okay so this will generate our vector vec now the first first uh assumption the first guy is let's say f2 is or sorry f1 is going to be 1 plus x f2 is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial f3 is one more term added so on and so forth so what does that what does that mean the subsequent values of f are nothing but come sum of vec so this will give us the values of e to the power x approximation to the first term second term third term and so on and so forth okay and now you can find the difference between subsequent terms find out what difference is less than uh, let me see the tolerance less than 5 e minus 3 and that will give you the solution so this was how the solution of that particular problem was given in the solution manual okay this is not the only way for you to be able to solve it what we can do is we can solve it using a for or a while loop also so if you are doing this using a for loop or a while loop you can let's say we want to do for loop so for i equal to 1 uh, 1 to let's say 15 okay I, again 15 is an arbitrary number that i'm taking over here we don't know whether it will converge in 15 or not okay uh, now uh, our value of f or ex eval is going to be nothing but 
you know the vec that we have formed earlier that's going to be uh, our e exp valve so we will do sum of vec 1 to i plus 1 that's going to be our exp valve okay our error is going to be abs of exp valve minus exp old okay and we need to give the value exp old as exp valve in order to store it okay and we will end this now if we run it only in this manner we will get an matlab will have a problem when it comes across this particular command and that's because exp old is not defined so we need to predefine our exp old equal to 1 why we are doing exp old as 1 because the first guy is just going to be 1 second guy is 1 plus x third guy is 1 plus x plus x square so we want to get the first guy so for the first guy exp old is 1 and then in the loop we will do all these three steps okay so this is the way that you can do this particular solution this was the way that one of the students in the forums had asked how to do this this particular way of solution this was something that i had shown you in one of the video lectures if you wanted to calculate e to the power x using first order term second order term third order term up to nth order terms okay so these are two possible ways to do this particular problem so whichever way you find comfortable uh, you can use use this way sir in assignment number 8 so in the third problem sir so in the damper spring equation okay mm -hmm. Yes, tell me. In the, uh, in the question number three, pneumatic uh, damper nonlinear equation, sir. Yes. There we give uh, d square x by dt square plus c into modulus of dx by dt into dx by dt, sir. Correct. So how can we solve that one? I mean, uh, how to multiply the twice twice times, or uh, how can we solve that one, sir? Yeah. so actually this question good question because this was also asked in one of the uh, uh, forum question which we have replied to i'll uh, yeah i'll just go to that okay so the fir first thing is as we had shown in the first lecture we are going to write dx by dt as v okay and then our dv by dt is going to be the right hand side of the given equation okay so this is the standard procedure we had used in the lecture okay now what does the right hand side actually include the right hand side of that equation is going to include c dx by dt into dx by dt plus kx squared negative of this divided by m this is going to be the right hand side okay now we don't have dx by dt but instead we have replaced dx by dt with v so what we do we will replace wherever dx by dt comes we are going to replace it with v okay so this is going to be your equation how to get this mod you get this mod using abs command in matlab and once you do that uh, the problem is uh, remaining part of the problem is same as how we have solved in the lectures okay, thank you sir sir in the solution of ordinary differential equations module uh, we discussed rk2 method rk3 rk4 methods and dawson methods ps methods but we feel difficult to feel memorize the formulas and how to memorize the formulas in easiest way sir okay uh, so first of all 
uh, you don't need to memorize any formula okay so if you there is there is no easy way to memorize the formula and uh, i don't expect we are not going to expect you to memorize the formula so with respect to ode ordinary differential equations what you need to know is this is let's say we have the rk2 method if we have rk2 method the best rk2 method is going to give us uh, the order of accuracy from global truncation error as h to the power 2 local truncation error is h to the power 3 those are the things which are not to be memorized but those are the things that are to be understood and we have tried to understand them you by solving several examples uh, one of the examples was in assignment 7 the other thing we have tried to understand is by comparison using euler's method rk2 hunes method and rk4 classical method so that those are the things that i expect you to understand uh, i am not going to test students on their memorization ability so you don't have to memorize whole formulas what you need to do is basically if you have done all the assignments uh, all the students have done assignments on their own uh, they wouldn't need to memorize those formula so for example uh, ode 45 the syntax for ode 45 is ode 45 at t comma y uh, followed by function name t comma y that part if you have done ode 45 in assignment 8 you would automatically the students would automatically know that particular formula so those are the things which one would expect you to kind of quote unquote remember but not the wholesale formula of the form uh Yun's method is uh, k1 equal to f of t comma y k2 equal to f of t plus h comma y of t plus h uh, y of k1 plus h so those are the things i do not expect you to memorize uh, it, was that clear answer or do you have a follow up question on that okay, okay. sir okay sir uh, sir in matlab input function od45 uh, we use two element as output or input argument but in other matlab input function we use only one and as the output argument, uh, how about those are uh, whether this one element as output argument and two element as input arguments? Sorry, last last part. I can you repeat? Uh, mm -hmm. So in OD forty five, we have two output arguments. This two input argument. Two, two input, input arguments. Yes, correct. But in other MATLAB input, input function, we use only one as element as input arguments. Correct. In OD45, we have two output arguments. Okay. Uh, so, uh, have you completed the question? Uh, so, I'm I'm not sure if I understood the question. So, let me try to answer based on what I've understood. And if uh, I've not understood it correctly, then uh, correct me. Okay. You can see the notes, right? So. In, so in non-linear equation solving, for example, we had equa to solve equation. We had to solve equations of the type f of x equal to zero. Okay, not showing. So this was the equation that we want to we wanted to solve for non-linear equation solving. Okay, the equation that we wanted to solve for linear equations was of the form a x bar equal to b where a is known and b is known right uh, when it came to for example integration we had to solve integral f of x dx okay everywhere you see that there was as we had as we write down the equations on uh, using pen and paper we have only one dependent or independent variable in which we write as against that when we write ODE is we write the ODE of the form dy by dt equal to f of t comma y an example of that is let's say dy the example is let's say dy by dt is minus 2ty so dy by dt the right hand side of the function is a function of both t and y 
y itself can be a vector but the meaning of t is time meaning of y is the the variables that we want to solve for if you look at the other examples non linear equation solving linear equation solving or integration your x bar various things had the similar meaning those were the things that we wanted to solve for here x bar had same meaning x bar were the things that we wanted to solve for and in the integration x bar x had the same meaning which was x was the independent variable which varied independently of the function okay whereas here t is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable and that's why we have this as in the form f of t comma y okay so this is the reasoning behind why uh, od solving has equation or uh, has equation of this sort uh, of this sort whereas all the others had equations of this type okay that's one part of the answer and that's from understanding how uh, how the system behaves uh the other part of the answer is this is how matlab has chosen to code ode solver and f solve so therefore we have to use the uh, structure that matlab has used so we don't have a choice in that case okay so i've tried to give the answer in two forms one is we are doing it this way because there is a reasoning behind this but really the 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 complete answer to that is also because that is how matlab has its internal commands uh, listed as okay so i'm not sure if this was indeed your question so please let me know if if if, if i misunderstood your question no so was that your question or i misunderstood the question did did i answer your question okay sir you have answered the understandable one sir the answer is understandable one sir okay okay fine yeah. sir uh, sir is there any uh, difference between the open source scilab with respect to the matlab commands uh okay so if you are looking at open source software uh scilab and matlab are two different software so it's it's like uh, i mean it's a wrong example but let's say matlab is like c++ and scilab is like c so they are different some 80% of the commands might be similar but they are two different software. there is another open source software called uh, new octave o c t c octave that is much more similar to matlab because new octave says this is if there is any command any matlab file that runs in matlab it has to run in octave also so if you want to use open source software that is very close to matlab uh, use octave but scilab is a similar software to matlab not the same have you required to submit matlab code from given estimate tin tin uh, yeah. uh, so i just mute uh, unmuted your microphone please go ahead yes yeah, sir yes the final exam have you required to submit matlab code from given assignment uh so there will be one problem of writing a matlab code and that problem will be from one of the assignments or one of the video lectures uh, very similar to uh, assignment or video lectures so you will have to write the code however matlab will not be available while you are doing your final exam so what i am looking for is not accurate syntax but your understanding of matlab and your understanding of that particular numerical technique so that is what i would be looking for so i have just just an hour back i have posted a response to one of the questions uh, on the forum uh, this uh, same question how do we write matlab code and so on and so forth and uh, that will also give you more detail so if there is for example some Uh, error in the syntax that's not going to be a problem but you are not uh, expected to write an algorithm over there but you are expected to write as close as possible to a something that looks like a matlab code thank you sir sir what is the negative esteem, negative mark scheme for the final exam uh, the negative marks are only for the multiple choice questions so i think there are maybe five or six something like that multiple choice questions so for that uh, if you if you look at the model question paper 
uh, you will see that only one of these questions have negative markings. So if you get the answer correct, you will get three points. If you get it wrong, you will get minus one, one point. None of the other questions, so for example, MSQ, mul multiple select questions that are there in uh, 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 match the columns and all that, they do not have any negative marking. Negative marking is only for multiple choice question where there is only one correct answer. Sir, I have a PPT of final exam pattern. In this okay. exam pattern, I am watching a six, six section as for the error. I am not able to understand this section. So let me let me do this because uh, I think will uh, it will be better if I am able to. Uh, so I don't have that particular uh, PDF shown on your screen. But okay, so what this spot the error question is going to be is I will write a code, a small code, which would be say a five or ten line code in MATLAB. Okay, and one of the lines in the code will have an error. So you need to find out which line in the code has an error or what is the error that MATLAB will flag. So to if you have your PDF open in front of you, it's a two line code that I have given in the PDF. Uh, let me let me just try to do this over here. Okay, uh, can you see the notes journal? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Okay, so the code that I have given is x equal to 1 to 10, that's line number 1, and y equal to x caret 2. Okay, now x equal to 1 to 10 means that it's a vector. We have seen in multiple examples that if you do vector power 2, you are going to get an error in MATLAB. Okay, you, uh, after this uh, session is over, you can try this particular code out in MATLAB. You will see you will get an error. The reason why you will get an error is because the vector is a 1 by 10 vector and 1 by 10 vector cannot multiply with another 1 by 10 vector. So it cannot multiply with itself. Okay, what is the correct answer? The correct answer would be you will do a dot caret. Dot caret is element by element power. Okay, so the error because this dot wasn't there, it was like this. So therefore, the error is in line number two. Okay, so one type of question would be which line has an error. In this case, your answer will be two. The other type of question will be what would be the correct way of writing this particular line. If that is the question, your answer will be y equal to x dot caret 2 or your uh, answer could be power x comma 2, y equal to x comma 2. Okay, any of these would be correct or if you come up with uh, a different way of writing this, that's also actually perfectly fine. So there are, there are a couple of type of questions that we have in spot the error to find out the line number in which there is an error or if there is an error, what is the correct way of writing that particular line of code. Okay, also keep in mind that if the code is completely correct, then you put the answer as zero because there is no error in any of the line numbers and if there is no error in any of the line numbers, do not leave that answer blank, put the value equal to zero over there. This problem does not have negative marking, so please, uh, you know, try to answer something over there so that uh, there is some chance of getting, getting points, okay? Yeah, sir, I have one more question. Sir, have you required to MATLAB software in for uh, final exam? Uh, no, we we will not be able to provide MATLAB software in final exam. So you yeah, so you do not so you do not have a way of checking in MATLAB uh, whether the code is syntactically correct or not. So you kind of have to write what is in 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 uh, uh, in books and all that. This is called pseudo code. Pseudo code means 
something that is almost like a code but there might be syntax error is there any any command for for odi 45 to calculate specific time sir yes it calculates at specific okay uh, yeah that's a good question because i did not cover this okay can you see the uh, uh, journal screen sir yes, yes, yeah sir. okay so uh, we have been using tsol comma ysol equal to etc etc where we give t span let's say equal to 1 comma 10 or sorry 0 comma 10 okay just to give an example if you give this then od45 calculates the values between 0 and 10 at all the points that it determines internally okay however yes. if instead let's say you wanted the values at time 1 5 10 25 50 and 50 you can give your t span as 0 comma 1 comma 5 comma 10 comma 25 comma 50 in that case what matlab is going to do is this is your initial time okay and matlab will give output only at these five times not at internally computed points but only at these points okay so in this particular case if you give this as a command your t sol will be the same as t span and your y sol will have six rows uh, sorry yeah will have six rows first row corresponding to 0 second row corresponding to 1 and sixth row corresponding to time 50 sir i have another doubt sir yes please sir will you please suggest any textbook for writing matlab associate exam which is connected with the math book uh i am uh, uh, have they specified anything no because i am not not much aware about uh, what requirements that there are uh, so that's why i'm asking you uh, have they specified something in their website do you know no, sir oh. they didn't okay. specify that's why okay if they have not specified an excellent book for matlab numerical methods is a book by fawcett that's the book that we have specified as a possible textbook for this course if students are interested in learning more about matlab for numerical computation however matlab associate certification is not just for uh, uh, for numerical programming it is in general general purpose matlab usage including plotting including uh, analysis and so on which the fawcett's book does not cover so uh, uh, if, if 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 you want more information please post, post it on the forum and uh, someone might be able to answer to that i do not know the answer of the top of my head right now so thank you very much sir sir uh, sir how to calculate the inverse for a non square matrix or the matrix values matrix determinant value is zero uh, okay so okay two part answer the first part is inverse of a non square matrix is not defined what is defined is what is known as a pseudo inverse and uh, so we won't we won't get into that uh, because those are you typically advanced concepts you usually don't do them in an engineering course for btex uh, so there is something called pseudo inverse and you can look it up uh, in matlab help or online but inverse is defined for a square matrix which has full rank so if it's an n cross n matrix rank of which is equal to n only then an inverse is defined otherwise an inverse is not defined okay however there are other concepts which is known as uh, pseudo inverse and uh, uh, jordan decomposition and singular value decomposition something that we do not cover in a typical btech course good afternoon sir sir if i have a array of 100 random numbers and i want every fourth element starting from the 20th element till the end sir can i do this sir can you do what 
sir. I am repeating the question, sir. Okay. Yes. So the question I heard. Are you typing something on the chat? Sir, I am repeating the question, sir. Sure. If I have an array of hundred random numbers, and I want every fourth element, starting from the twentieth element till the end, sir, how will I do this, sir? Uh, you tell me how will you do this? Sir, What's the starting me, element? Sir, I want to do this uh, without making use of lo loops, sir. Right. What's the starting element? Sir, I, the starting element will be sir twenty fourth element, sir. Twenty. Right. What's the step? What's the step that you are taking? Every fourth element you want. So what's the step that you are taking? I will uh, assign the value of. I will take a particular variable. Then I will assign uh, the location of the twentieth fourth variable. Then I will increase its consequent right. by four. Right. And how do you do that using colon colon notation? Yes, sir. Using colon notation. If how will you do that? Okay. Can you see the journal screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So when you write twenty colon four colon hundred, what this gives is twenty, twenty four, twenty eight, thirty two, so on and so forth. Right? This is what the colon notation in MATLAB means. So if you want to access elements of any matrix or any array from the 20th element till the 100th element in steps of 4 you can give a 20 colon 4 colon 100 okay this is one way of doing things matlab actually makes it a little bit easier if you want to do it right till the end if you want to do it like right till the end you can also give this particular command so you can write a in brackets in circular brackets 20 colon 4 colon end or 20 colon 4 colon 100 both of these will work got it sir thank you sir sir for a square matrix turn value is 0 and how to calculate the inverse for the matrix sir if what is 0 sir for the for a square matrix determinant value is 0 Uh, how will you calculate the inverse if the determinant of a square matrix is zero then the matrix will not have an inverse okay so inverse is defined only for a uh, uh, full rank square matrix full rank square matrices means that uh, its determinant is non zero okay So yes, an, an inverse is not defined. There is something called pseudo inverse that is defined, which you can use p i n v instead of i n v. But uh, p i n v is not an inverse of a matrix. So inverse is not defined. Okay, sir. Yeah. So if there are no further questions, I think uh, we'll end this call. So. uh wish you all the best for uh, the final exam and for the final eighth assignment again for the final exam what uh, we expect uh, really is that uh, you should have a pretty decent understanding of the things that we have covered in this particular course uh, so for revision of this course the various pdf files that we have uploaded uh, those will be sufficient again not the examples but uh, what the learning that has been through those pdf files those are the things that uh, we are expecting so for example in a uh, 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 differentiation your central difference formula your forward difference formula the fact that forward difference is h to the power 1 accurate central difference is h to the power 2 accurate uh, the fact that there is a minimum there is a optimum value of h step size h for which the errors are minimum those are the things that we have covered in differentiation when it came to integration we covered uh, trapezoidal rule simpson's one third rule 
and then the two matlab command trap z and quad so those are the things that uh, we expect you to understand and know uh, then in linear equations uh, the direct methods that we covered were the gauss elimination we can use gauss elimination for uh, for solving equations followed by gauss seidel method which is iterative method and the tdma algorithm uh, so those are the things from linear uh, equations again the idea of linear equation to solve ax equal to b the rank condition what the condition number means condition number as the ratio of eigen values so those will be the things from linear equation with respect to non linear equation uh, the newton raphson and bisection rule that we use and the fixed point iteration method those were the numerical methods that we use and the matlab algorithms that we use were f0 and f solve so those are the things from module 5 in module 6 uh, linear regression non linear regression how to do linear regression using the matrix method how to do non linear regression uh, using lsq non lin uh, those those are the things that we covered in module 6 module 7 and 8 ode 45 and ode 15s what we mean by stiff systems when to use ode 45 and ode 15s uh and how to use ode45 and ode15s uh finally the euler's method rk2 and rk4 methods not the equations of rk2 rk4 methods but the accuracy and rk2 uses two terms rk4 uses four terms and so on and so forth so those were the things that in a nutshell we have covered in this particular module what i am also going to do is list of all the assignment problems that we have solved so you will get an idea of the fact that we have solved some really interesting problem from electrical engineering chemical engineering mechanical engineering civil engineering so those i will post after the assignment 8 is over so that uh, you can get an idea of the type of problems that you have solved in the assignments so yeah so i hope this has been a very useful learning experience for all of you guys so and thank you very much uh, for attending this day.